I just want to look younger. This is probably one of the most common requests patients will see you about. And in this show, I'm going to break down what it is that makes people look younger and make it easier for you to consult your patients and for patients to understand exactly what they're having and why. Before we dive in, make sure you like and subscribe, ring that little bell notification so that you see more content like this. I'm Dr. Tim Pierce. I'm a medical aesthetics doctor in the UK. I've been injecting for 15 years and training other clinicians for 10. Before we go to the treatments, let's first understand what makes a face look youthful. Now for me, I've always found this useful to look back at children because obviously they are the youngest and their face represents the ultimate potential of youth. So if you consider a baby's face, they have smaller jaws, broader cheeks proportionally to their faces, their eyes dominate, larger foreheads, smaller noses, usually an upturned nose, and relatively small but chins that are still the lowest point of their face. So looking at children's faces helps you understand where the face is coming from. Now, of course, patients don't want to look like children. They're actually aiming to look like they did in their prime. But we understand that better by considering where the face started and where it's going. So the prime of someone's life, depending on your perspective, is somewhere between 18 and 30, for example. And this is really what we're trying to articulate to patients and often what patients are trying to articulate to us when we design a really good treatment plan. Is how do we bring you back to that sweet spot and obviously not make you look too young and not make you look older. And it's very easy to do both uh, depending on the patient. So let's dive in and discuss which treatments are best for restoring a sense of youthfulness. Let's start by considering cheeks. The sweet spot of youth, there's a combination of definition and volume. If you look at a baby's face, there's often lots of volume but very little definition. And then as you get older, there's the sweet spot where you see the nice shadow underneath the cheek there's no temple volume loss, but there's fullness in the mid face. So often when you're treating cheeks, we are trying to add volume and definition to just the right point. Now, if you go beyond this, and this is particularly true if older women are treated with cheeks alone, you can create the other problem, which is you create a sense of temple volume loss. It's possible to make people look older sometimes if you overdo the definition. So it's the sweet spot between volume and definition that the cheek treatments are particularly useful for. I would say the best time to treat cheeks in isolation is probably in the 30s. Once you go beyond that, you need to think more holistically or you can have the opposite effect. Next, we'll consider probably one of the more powerful ways to make someone look fresher or younger, which is with lip volume. Now, first of all, I'll take you back to what a child's face looks like. If you look at a young child, often the lip projection is basically off the scale. They actually have huge amounts of lip projection and a very dominant top lip, a short philtrum. Now, of course, we don't want to create that in grown-ups, but it does tell you where the youthful lip started. The older lip is the exact opposite. Very small, flat top lip, often a, a bigger, proportionately bigger lower lip, but very little definition. And in particular, it's the lack of projection that I think holds people back. The lips become relatively small in the face. And this is why it's a very easy way to improve the sense of youthfulness and attractiveness, particularly in females. Now, the other important thing is in female faces, lips are much more important because they are part of what makes a face female. Lips should be more dominant in females and less dominant in males. Uh, but also just brings the face into proportion generally. So aside from proportion, which we're able to correct somewhat, we can also remove some of the smaller lines that happen around the lips. And this is a very easy way to improve someone's, I often refer to it as the aura, because a negative expression is a pursed lip, a small lip that looks angry. Um, and instead we can do that, we can relax that part of the mouth with either a combination of botulinum toxin or dermal filler, but to remove those lines and wrinkles so that the lips dominate, there are no distractions, all you see is the bright pink of the lip, the strength of the eyes, and you don't have clutter around that hides some of those features. Next, let's consider treating the chin. So this is a more subtle way that you can make someone look younger or fresher. And it comes from understanding what tends to happen with the face as it gets older, which is you have this competition between the lateral part of the face or the cheeks and the chin. Cheeks tend to come down and out. So they become down and forwards and the chin starts to rotate up. Your mentalis muscle is constantly pulling up your whole life. And what you end up with is a loss of definition where the chin is as the jowls out compete. So the overall heart shape of the face it becomes lost. And an easy way that we can help return the face back to its more youthful state is to bring the chin 
downwards slightly. This doesn't work on everyone and different people have different shaped faces. So sometimes there's a different kind of aging where the chin actually becomes more dominant. So if you have a long face with a strong chin, that tends to get stronger as you get older. And sometimes it's more about lateral volume in those people. But for a very common type of aging, it's about just making sure that the chin is dominating the lower face. Another one that most patients have not thought of is temples. So temple volume loss is a very strong sign of aging, but it's often a very subconscious sign of aging. People don't spot it. There are no lines or wrinkles. It's not a feature that people are drawn to like lips, noses and chins or cheeks. So it often goes missed. It's very important to do a good consultation with your patients to bring into focus the things that they don't consciously notice and temples was probably number one on that list. So if you do mention to a patient that one of the signs of aging is volume loss that can make you look skeletal, although it's not a nice thing to hear about yourself, it does make sense to people. Oh, I can see my skeleton through in the shape of my face and I could, when I was younger, I couldn't see that. So this is one of the easier ways to make someone look younger without anyone knowing what's happened uh, because it's very hard to spot for the same reasons that patients don't notice it. You simply look younger and fresher. It can also, in some patients, be associated with a pull of the eyebrow laterally, which is very restorative because if you think about where your temple is, the lateral lift of your eyebrow, even by a few millimeters, makes someone look much more alert and much more essentially youthful. So temples can be a great way of making someone look younger in a way that's very subtle that no one would notice. So more subtle still is probably forehead restoration. So the forehead of a baby is a great starting point to think about what a youthful forehead looks like. Babies' faces are dominated essentially by their forehead, but of course as as humans, we have these huge brains and these small faces that we're born with, and that develops over time. But that relative dominance of the forehead is beautiful, uh, particularly forehead projection in females uh, is quite a beautiful shape. We don't like it sort of sloping backwards or complexity in the forehead. So if you consider what happens as you lose volume as you get older, you often end up with almost three different planes in the forehead. You have two lateral and one central. And what we can do with dermal filler is to just restore the overall roundness and softness of those curves um, so that it, the forehead essentially catches the light in a more youthful way and you look younger and fresher. Finally, we can think about what neurotoxins can do to make someone look fresher or younger. So essentially what we're doing with most Botox treatments is improving the canvas. We're getting rid of fine lines and wrinkles. So essentially that makes the eyes dominate. The, the other features, including the lips, are also part of this. And if you consider what a baby's face looks like, it's basically all about eyes. Everything's framing the eyes. And as you get older, complexity increases and the eyes have to compete with other features, in particular lines and wrinkles in the upper face, which you can remove with botulinum toxins. I think they work best in kind of 35-year-olds, roughly in that, that spectrum. But, you know, you get benefit even up to 90 but the biggest, easiest way to make someone look younger is to soften fine lines and wrinkles with a small amount of botulinum toxin. As you get older, usually it's multiple modalities that we're using, not just one thing. In fact, using just one treatment is exactly what makes people look slightly out of kilter and maybe even older in certain cases. I will be doing a whole YouTube show on treatments that can accidentally make people look older, so look out for that. So I hope that helped you understand some of the treatments that are most associated with looking younger or fresher.